Hello everyone, we are going to do three examples of taking the derivative using the definition of derivative. The three basic examples include a polynomial function, a rational function, and a radical function. Let's get started. So the first one is a polynomial function, and to get started, we already have written down the definition of derivative. Okay, so now we want to evaluate this limit. So first, we are going to plug the x plus h into all the x's that we see here. So let's just get started. So we are going to have the limit is h approaching 0 here. So now this f of x plus h, we are going to copy down the function. So we are going to write it down here like this. We have 3 blank. So put it as a blank and then minus four and then blank again, and then plus five. And as you can see from the color, this is only for this first function here, f of x plus h. And then now we will plug in the x plus h in here. So we get x plus h and then x plus h. Okay, so that's not finished with the numerator because we still have the minus f of x that we need to put down and we haven't put it down yet, right? So let's put that down. So we have minus, and we have 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. Now there is a problem here because there is a minus sign in front of this function. And so this is okay because we only have one turn here, but then when we start writing out the function, we have more than one turn. And so in this case, we actually need to put a pair of parentheses so that we would distribute this negative one to all the turns inside the parentheses. Okay, so the next step is to start multiplying everything out in the numerator. So what we do is that we are going to have the limit as h approaching zero, and then now let's multiply everything out. So here we have x plus h squared, right? So we have three, and then there is a formula that we can use. We can, uh, we can square the first turn, we can square the second turn, and then we can add the twice the first term multiply the second term. So the formula that we are recalling here, okay, so for this one right here, we are going to just recall that if we have a plus b quantity square, that will give us the first term square plus two times the first term and the second term and then plus the second term square. Okay, so what we're going to do is that we're going to write it down. So we are going to have x square, that's the square of the first term, plus two times the first turn times the second turn, and then plus, and then the h square, which is the second turn square, so h square here. And then now for the four times x plus h, we just distribute the negative four. So we are going to get four times, no, actually we don't need that. So we have minus four x minus four h, and then plus five, okay, so that's up to here. And then now distribute this negative one to all the stuff inside the parentheses. So we get minus 3x squared plus 4x minus 5. And then there was still an h at the bottom. So we'll just leave it for now. Okay, so now we just need to continue to distribute, right? So let's continue to distribute. So we are going to get 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared. So we are distributing the 3. And then the other stuff just copy. Okay, so right now we can start combining like turns and canceling the turns that are the same, right? So uh, if they have the opposite signs. So right now what happens is that we can um, we can do the cancellation here, three x squared, and then that negative three x squared, we can cancel them. There is the negative four x here, there is a positive four x here, we can cancel them. There is a positive five, negative five, right? So cancel them. And then what else do we have here? We do have the six x h and then plus 3h squared and then minus 4h and uh, nothing can be canceled and then we cannot combine them so just leave them right now so let's let's just continue so we have 6xh plus 3h squared and then minus 4h and then in the denominator there was still the h Okay, so now uh, we can factor out the h because if we plug the h in the numerator and the denominator, we still are getting zero over zero, right? So we can factor out the h and then we can cancel out the h. So if we do that, we can actually do it in this step right here. So we can factor out the h, we get 6x plus 3h minus 4. And then there is this h at the bottom, so now we can cancel them. So we have a new limit we are getting 6x plus 3h minus 4. 
And then now we can actually just plug the zero in here. So if we plug the zero in here, this is approaching zero. And so we will simply just get 6x minus 4. And that's our derivative function. So that's f prime of x. Okay, now let's look at the next example. Now, second example, we have a rational function this time, and we are still using the same way to find the derivative. So we are using the limit of the difference quotient. So here we are going to start writing the limit as h approaching zero. Okay, so now the numerator, we need to start filling in the, uh, the first function, and that is just one over, and then two blank, minus 3 and then what should we fill inside the blank it's x plus h that we need to fill in so we have x plus h fill in here and then now what happened is that we're going to put the minus sign here so we are going to put the minus sign for the numerator and then now the second function which is just the original function because this is f of x so we have 1 over 2x minus 3 and so that's our numerator and then the denominator is actually just the same as before so we just have h okay so now we need to evaluate this limit and of course we cannot just directly plug in the zero into the h because we are going to get zero at the top and zero at the bottom and so that will not allow us to uh, figure out what the limit is and so we're going to do something to this expression the way that we're going to do it is that we are going to multiply the top and the bottom by something and then you may say what should we multiply Right? What we can do is that we can multiply by the LCD, which would be multiplying the product of the two denominators together. And so we can multiply the top by this 2x plus 2h minus 3, and then 2x minus 3. Yeah, so as you can see here, this factor is actually the same thing as this denominator here. I just distributed the two. And then I got to do the same thing to the bottom. So I need to multiply by 2x plus 2h minus 3 and then 2x minus 3. And so right now the next step is to uh, distribute this to both terms, both fractions inside the parentheses. So what we're really doing is that we are we are actually just distributing this to this fraction here and then also to this fraction here. And then so just think about this, when you put this at the top of this fraction, this factor here, 2x plus 2h minus 3, it's the same thing, right? So they cancel each other out, and then we are left with just the 2x minus 3 for the first fraction. Okay, so let's write it down. So we have 2x minus 3. So that's what we have left, because this factor will cancel with the denominator. And then now there is a minus sign here, so let's put the minus sign. And then the second fraction, and as you can see here for the second fraction, this denominator 2x minus 3 will cancel with this 2x minus 3. So we're left with just this factor, the 2x plus 2h minus 3. Let's just copy it down here. So we get 2x plus 2h minus 3. And there is one thing that's really important to just keep is to write down the parentheses. So make sure that you do not forget the parentheses right here because there was a minus sign in the front. So that minus sign is supposed to be distributed to all the terms inside the parentheses. Okay. And then now the denominator, there is not much that we can do with the denominator. I do not suggest that you multiply rating out. So just leave it. So leave the H, leave all that stuff at the bottom in the factor form. So we have H and then 2X plus 2H minus 3 and then 2X minus 3. Just copy everything from there. Okay, so we are, we are good to go. We are continuing with the calculation. Let's distribute this minus sign to all the terms inside the parentheses. So we are going to get 2x minus 3 minus 2x minus 2h and then plus 3. As you can see that the minus sign will change all the signs inside. And then what about the denominator still? Just copy. Okay, so now we can start doing some cancellation. And as you can see here, we can do some cancellation. The 2x minus 2x, they cancel each other out. Negative 3 and the positive 3, they also cancel each other out. And so we are really just left with this term right here, negative 2h. Okay, so let's just write an additional step right here. We have negative 2h. And then at the bottom, we still just copy. And then what do you see here? We can actually cancel out the h, right? So let's cancel out the h. 
And so, after canceling out the H, we're having just a negative two at the top. And then we have those two factors at the bottom, right? The H is gone. So we have 2x plus 2h minus 3, 2x minus 3. And then now it's good to plug in the h equals 0, right? So uh, h is not 0, but then h is approaching 0, so 2h is also approaching 0. So you can see that that's approaching 0 when h is approaching 0. Okay, so what happens? Then we can actually simplify, and then we have the final answer. So we have negative 2 in the numerator, 2x minus 3, and then 2x minus 3. Okay, or if you want, you can write the answer as negative 2. Then we have 2x minus 3 squared. Okay, either one is good. Okay, so uh, that's it for this example. We are going to look at the next example now. Okay, now we have a radical function. And this is one of those easy ones because we have a linear expression inside the square root. Okay, so let's get started. And just to save time, I already put down the definition of derivative here. And what we are going to do is to write down the numerator first and then the denominator is really just the h. Okay, so we are going to start writing. The limit is h approaching 0. And then now the first function f of x plus h. So now we need to plug x plus h into the x that we see here. So we are going to get square root of 4 blank and then plus 5. And then we need to plug in to the blank. And so we are going to have the x plus h inside the blank. We have the minus sign and that minus sign comes from here. And then now we have the original function f of x. So we have the square root of 4x plus 5. So this is the limit that we need to calculate to find the derivative of the function f. Okay, so how do we do this one? The way that we do it to, to simplify this expression, we can actually multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction, multiply by the conjugate of this expression right here. So that means we need to multiply by almost the same expression, but we change the sign middle to a plus. So now what we do is that we are going to get this limit as h approaching 0. And then we have all that stuff, right? So we have the square root of 4x plus 4h plus 5. I actually distributed the 4. And then minus the square root of 4x plus 5. And then as you can see that in the denominator, we still have that h we still have the h. And what we do is that we need to multiply by this conjugate. So we have the square root of 4x plus 4h plus 5. So everything stays the same inside the square root. And then we also copy down the second square root. So we have the square root of 4x plus 5. And the only difference that we have would actually just be the sign middle between the two radicals. So we put a plus right here. And then because we multiply something at the top, right? We also need to multiply the same stuff at the bottom. So we are going to get the square root. Okay, so now we are actually ready to move on, right? So as you can see here, we have, this looks really messy, but then you can see that that's actually giving us the difference of two squares. And so let's just recall a formula right here so that we can uh, we can multiply this easily. So what happens is that we can just recall that when we have a minus b times a plus b, what we get is that we are getting a squared minus b squared. Okay, so that means the first radical is the a here, the second radical is the b, and so we have a minus b, and that's a plus b. So when we multiply them, we simply will just get a squared minus b squared. That means we square the first radical, and then we also square the second radical, and then we put a minus sign in between. And that makes the calculation a lot easier than just, uh, just than multiplying this out. Okay, and then now for the denominator, we are not going to do anything. We're just going to leave it as it is for now. Okay, so now we have square this radical, which will give us the stuff on the inside without the radical. So we are going to get 4x plus 4h plus 5. 
Okay, so that's what we have. And then we also need to square the second radical. So we are going to get 4x plus 5. And then we have a minus sign between. So put a minus sign right here. That's actually important. But there is one more thing that's even more important is that because we have two terms here and we put a minus sign here, so we need to put a pair of parentheses. So this is something that should not be forgotten. Okay, and then now for the denominator, just leave it. So we have h times all that stuff. As you can see here, we have minus 4x minus 5, right? We can distribute the, this negative sign to both terms inside the parentheses. So we are actually getting, we're actually just getting this part. This part is actually just what? Negative 4x, negative 5. And so you can just think of that uh, minus quantity of 4x plus 5 as negative 4x minus 5. And so what we can do is that we can start doing the cancellation, the 4x and the negative 4x can be canceled. So we can cancel them here. And then we can also cancel the plus five and the minus five, right? So we can cancel them. And so as you can see here, we are left with just one term, just the 4h, okay? So at the bottom, we still just copy. So the next step, we have 4h. And then in the denominator, we have h times the square root, 4x plus 4h plus five, and then plus the square root of 4x plus five. And then so now, as you can see that because when h is approaching zero, both the top and the bottom are approaching zero because of those factors of h. Now we can cancel them. So we cancel those h. So what do we get here? When we cancel them, then we can, um, we will get a new expression. We can get, get a new limit here. So we get a four in the numerator. And then we have the square root of four x plus four h plus five and then plus the square root of 4x plus 5. As you can see here, when h is approaching 0, then this 4h is also approaching 0. So we can do a direct substitution here. And so that means this is approaching 0. And so we have what? We have, we will simply just have uh, 4. And then this first radical here is radical 4x plus 5. And so we have 4x plus 5. That's our first radical. And then plus the second radical. The second radical is actually the same thing. So we are going to get the square root of 4x plus 5. You see what's going on here when those two are the same thing. We just combine them into two times radical. So we are going to get 4. Then two times the radical. So two times the radical of 4x plus 5. And so now there is the 2 and the 4 that we can cancel out, right? So we have 2 and the 4 that we can cancel. So we just get a 2 here. And then do you see what's going on here? We have the final answer. So the final answer would be 2 and then the radical. I mean 2 over the radical of 4x plus 5. And then that's it for this problem. Okay, and so that's the final answer. Okay, so thank you for watching all three examples. I will see you next time.